Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Season 2, Episode 21. Hello and thanks for listening to Education on Fire. Um, I'd like to welcome back Stella James, who you will have heard on episode one of season two, which was our recording from the NAEP conference. Um, Stella is the founder of Gooseberry Planet, um, which uses gaming technology to help children learn about internet safety. And essentially, it's a a complete toolkit to teach e-safety and includes apps and resources for students, schools, teachers um, and parents. So it's kind of an an all-inclusive package. Um, um, Welcome, Stella, and thanks for joining us again. Oh, hi, Mark, and you're very welcome. Been looking forward to it. Brilliant, thank you. So can you give us um, a bit more of a background of um, how Gooseberry Planet came about, and, and I'm really interested also about the name as well and where that came from and, um, and sort of its sort of original origins? Um, well, the, the name, and there is no scientific or, you know, it's quite simple, really. I was walking the dog and I had a moment, a light bulb moment on a garden, um, on a garden bench by a park while I was walking the dog, so... Nothing too, um, you know, too exciting, I'm afraid. And the actual concept, um, that came out of my own challenges with my own children. So my son was going um, to secondary school for the first time, and he wanted a smartphone. And I went online to try and find him, um, to teach him about it. And he's a bit of a cool dude, 11-year-old, you know, pretty savvy already. And, you know, I looked and I thought, he's not going to do any of what's out there. And... um, and it was all text-based, which I thought was a bit dull as well. So, and that's why I came up with the gaming side of things. Um, yeah, and the gamification. And e-safety and obviously computing in schools is a is a really big and important topic for everybody. And um, how how have you found um, the way things have been taught? How have they changed? And and how do you think sort of technology and and specifically how Gooseberry Planet is um is working with schools and and and, and the, the sort of the collaboration between the two? Well, I think, you know, it's a new area. So um, more than having to change, I think it has to change. You know, a lot of schools do one day a year. You know, Internet Safety Day is absolutely brilliant, but some schools think that that tick box is there and that's fine. Um, But what I feel and what I'm very passionate about and what I'm trying to change is that we incorporate it more into... um, you know, into the curriculum, so it's ongoing, and that's where the train, need, train, you know, the change needs to be, is that it can't be just once, a, a once a year and here and there. It needs to be consistent, um, and you know, teachers are unequipped as well, and it's not their fault. They haven't got the resource. So what we're trying to achieve is that we give the teachers the resource and we give them the process um, and a program um, to follow in order to tick that one box and actually make a difference and actually do teach children about, you know, what they should and how they should be doing it online. So how exactly, um, for people that haven't come across Gooseberry Planet or actually haven't um, used the apps or the games before, how, how does it work? How do you sort of first approach it? Um, let's say, first of all, if you were a, you're a teacher listening and, and it's the sort of thing you might want to incorporate in your classroom or within your school. Okay, well, the game itself is a tool. It's a classroom tool. So there is isn't there is an emphasis on it, but, you know, everything we've created is very, very flexible. So first of all, the child plays the game. Um, and there's different levels for different year groups, so different languages, different scenarios, you know, going down to playground, which is for year one. It's very basic. It's just touching on selfies and webcams and all those type of things. Um, so while the child is playing, the teacher then has... Um, an app or they can log into our platform and that views and shows exactly um, how the child is performing in the game and highlights vulnerabilities but it also is supported by a workbook which is inside the teacher app and a lesson plan which is supported inside the lesson plan and resource so we we feed resource and one of the teachers biggest challenges is keeping it up to date so we keep ours up to date with all the latest apps that children will be using and then the nice little connection is it's got the parent as well so the parent can log in and view and see how their child is performing at school we've got an update happening later in the year where um, the parent will be emailed with how their child responded to a scenario and what they need to be talking to their child about so it really gives hands-on advice and the 
what I really love about that is the fact that it's it's all connected. It's not um, individual um, sections of the school does it on their own and the child does it on their own and the parent doesn't quite know what's going on. The, the whole thing is inclusive, which seems like a really, really, really key factor, which I've not really heard about before. Um, and when, when the, the children are doing it, are they using it on an app, on an iPad, or are they doing it um, on an online platform on the computer? How, how does that part work? All the above. So um, they go via our website, so that's our online platform. We've also got it on iPad, well, um, iTunes, so iPads and iTouches, and also tablets as well. Great. And so, do you think it's the it's the regular use of it which is is going to be the most important thing f- um, for the children in terms of the, the, their progression? So they get used to the scenarios and they think, oh, I know it all now. I don't need to learn anymore. So how how does the progression work um, as they get older? Is it just the scenarios change and fit a little bit more around what it is that they're likely to become exposed to? It's more than that. So you know. In the same way that teachers teach children about their times table, it's about repetition. Um, and you can't, you, know, you can't change your mindset unless you do it again and again and again and again and again. So they don't play the same game again and again, but that there's a repetition in there so that they can learn. And within one level, there's 10 games. So once they finish the 10 games, it becomes a game. So again, after 12 weeks, which is you know, the program, they can play it again and compete against with their schoolmates. And that's the key thing. It's about repetition. And that's the only way that we're going to change and make children aware of the real dangers that are out there. And in your, in your, your experience of all of this, what, what do you think the, 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 the dangers are? And, and how do you sort of um, bridge the barrier between kind of just feeling safe online because you're aware of the dangers and you know um, how to deal with them? And um, as opposed to just everything being set up as a, as a fearful scenario, um, which then has a sort of a more negative impact on the child and maybe what they, they, they think they may happen on the Internet. You've got to be positive. The Internet is an amazing tool and it is a, an amazing tool for all of us. And um, no matter how much, you know, we can all put the fear of God in our children, um, but then actually they still want to explore and um, you can block, which is fine, but then it goes underground. Um, we have to embrace. Children don't see an online and offline scenarios now. They see everything as online. And so what we need to do in exactly the same way as crossing the road, um, you know, like we used to all be taught with, you know, um, that little hedgehog. I can't remember what it's called. I'm showing my age now. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we have to educate No matter what we do, it's all about educating and showing children and highlight um, what potentially could happen. You know, look at Kaylee's love story, just been released. Um, You know, it's on our Facebook page if anybody wants to go and have a look at it. But it's heart rendering that in the space of two weeks, a girl befriends a guy on Facebook. He's not who he says he is. She meets him. And then, you know, 15 days later, she's dead. Um, yeah, I met with the Breck Foundation. Um, her son Breck was murdered by an online gamer. Um, he was 18. I think Breck was 13 or 14 years old. Yet yeah, there are huge dangers there. So what we need to do is teach children to be aware of, you know, what potentially could happen. And you know, we're so old-fashioned in the way that we speak. You know, we say stranger danger. Children don't use stranger danger. We say online people because it's people online that you know they relate to it's like cyber bullying and things like that children don't use cyber bullying it's online bullying you know it's those type of thing. it's all it's also about our terminology and it's about education and i guess that's a two-way street isn't it because um and we were just in just before we started recording and um and and there are things that i learn about from our children because the school may well mention that um something's happened or someone's um made um, the school aware of a particular incident and so we we get an email to be informed that, um, that this has happened and as you start to open that conversation again which is always a really positive thing um, it often we, we hear things and, and new things which have been developed which um, we haven't heard of but the children have because they've sort of been um, exposed to this sort of thing and I think that's quite a positive thing it's, it's the it's the two-way communication and just an open dialogue about how all these things work that I think is probably key rather than assuming that as the adults or, or even as the teachers 
teacher that we know everything you know we might have a curriculum to follow or something that we know we have to get across but actually listening and being involved the other way around is probably a really important factor yeah the open dialogue is one of the most important factors and um you know evidence is proving that if something sinister happens and you've got an open dialogue with a child um you know they're more likely to come to you and i think parents especially tend to sort of put their hand you know their head in the sand a little bit and go oh, i don't know about that but actually if you sit down with children and say and i do it with my 10 year old you know my constant research is with my own children what they're doing how they're doing it so you know my 10 year old i found from him being online um the game center the dangers of the game center and how to make them safe and i sit down with him on a regular basis and just watch what he's doing and teach myself and find out well how does that work luke what do you do here how do you do this um not so much my 15 year old because he thinks i'm an alien and doesn't (laughs) doesn't communicate anymore but very much you know it's about and it is about a two-way dialogue all the time. Use them to learn, and that you know that's absolutely spot on. Um, I mean, personally, we we, we had a, a situation recently where um, um, there there was a scam on um, related to a, a mobile phone, and it was just one of those things. I think you you know you'd be on YouTube or watching something like that, and um, and th- there's a company out there that that puts a f- um, almost like an invisible film over a particular page, and you click it just literally to. Um, to close the window or just to get off of what it is but they use that as a way of directly saying your agreement to actually paying or signing up to their services um and um that's really hard to combat isn't it i would imagine because you know the people involved aren't even aware that that's the case and um and i don't quite know when you sort of get to a level of people trying to do that sort of thing and and Essentially, what happens in that scenario is you're agreeing that your mobile phone provider um, actually can then charge you more money because we even had a cap on this particular contract. But because it was a third party, um, they said, oh, no, that doesn't cover that. And I had conversations with a mobile um, company and also eventually got through to the company that was actually doing this scam, which, they, of course, they don't actually say is a scam. It's a legitimate thing. Um, and they say we'll get your money back which of course I didn't and in the end we just decided to change our mobile provider because we said if we can't have the support and understanding of that then we don't feel safe using the company that we've got but but these sorts of things um it, that's not something I'd ever heard of before and it's only once we'd actually been caught up in this thing that you then suddenly find online there's all sorts of things like that happening yeah there's so much fake stuff that is going on and and I think that's one of the challenges and and I think we all just need to be vigilant and in an exactly the same as walk, way as walking around the streets and locking our windows. You know, I use that analogy a lot when I'm talking at parent workshops. And, um, you know, you wouldn't walk out the house without checking your windows. And it's just check your URL, see where it's going. You know, even on eBay now, you can click a link and it takes you outside of eBay and you think you've bought something. And, you know, it's all exactly as you said. It's completely legitimate. But... You looks on the face of it totally legitimate when you're actually inside um, eBay, but then the you know what actually comes out the other end is totally different, and you're 50 quid less lighter. And um, and I think you know I think the ISPs have a lot to do, and I think Google especially needs to tighten up on what goes on there to prevent this from happening because not everybody's savvy, everybody's very trustworthy, and everybody believes a lot, especially on Facebook what's there you know they think oh it's on facebook so therefore it means it's true and it's like well actually no you still got to be ultra vigilant and you still got to check where you're going and look at your url and check them out a little bit it seems you would buy something in a shop you know you wouldn't you know maybe some people would but you'd check before walking in a shop whether it's legitimate you'd be much happier buying something that's in a, a high street rather than on a market or just the side of the road because you know potentially there could be problems with it at a later date yeah, and and I guess that's that's the real key, isn't it, for these large companies, is the fact that people do have a sense that there's some safety involved in there, and um, and it just needs to be that hopefully they're working as hard as they possibly can to put everything in place for that to be the case, so that the um the people that are using um these websites and and using the service providers and and the social media that that they can be as safe as they can, and you feel like they're working on your side. I think that's that's part of the problem when you hear stories about privacy and trying to get your information and how all the algorithms work and that is you start to get a little bit of distrust I think um, and so 
the, the like you said, the, the whole feeling of it changes. It feels less positive. You feel like you really are on your own. And I think that's sort of a dangerous cycle to get in because, like you said, the internet's a really um, important resource now, not just for information, but for um, communication and, and just general sharing of our lives. You know, I mean, there are people that I'm in communication with now, which is purely because things like Facebook and Twitter and all those things are online and you get a chance to connect in a different way and and a more free way whereas you might not be able to travel to the other side of the country or a different part of the world or you might not have made that telephone call but the odds um message um actually is a nicer way of staying in touch yeah no totally and you're you know and you're absolutely right and we just it's, we just need to change the way that we think about things and it's just and it is an adjustment and i think you know our generation um you know, it has to think about that. My children's generation, it, generation, it will become natural. My 15-year-old, you know, I was listening to him having a chat with my 10-year-old, and he was like, Luke, just because it's on the internet doesn't always mean that it's true. And they're already a lot more savvy than, and they'll be okay, and they will be okay, but it's just there's some really slight people out there, and that's, you know, what we need to do is just protect them from that side of things. Yeah, and I, I really like your analogy about the, um, when you leave the house you lock the door and you check the window because it, it really is just that isn't it you know you're not afraid to walk outside of your house but you know that if you're going away you just need to make sure that you're secure and I guess that's exactly the same principle which is what you were saying about um, your safety on the internet it's the fact that you're going online all the time you're really enjoying it you're enjoying the content you're enjoying the social aspect but you just need to know that in certain circumstances you need to check where you're going you're checking that you're safe you're not get you're not going somewhere that you don't know where you're going or certainly that you're not using something that you haven't heard anyone else use or you don't that maybe you've said oh that i've come across this so and so has mentioned this particular thing um is it okay for me to to go on there and use it and that sort of thing and um i guess like you say it's just a question of checking in occasionally on on those sorts of things yeah no totally and and the more we live like that, you know, it's like sharing on Facebook. You know, I always use the analogy, well, I tell you what, just go and put it on Piccadilly Circus and write it up there and, and off you go. You just as well leave your front door open if you don't lock yourself down on your social media. It's exactly that. You know, you're telling everybody about you and your children. You know, the scary stats are that, that you know, by the age of five years old, there will be 1,500 images of a child online. Uh, you know, your daughter or your son, you know, <clears throat> because it's the parents that are posting all the time and they don't think about it and they're not thinking about their digital footprint or, you know, what how that can impact them later in life. And I think we just all need to be aware that now we're doing it online. It's not so much a physical sense, but we've got to do that as well. So, you know, and we can't go keep going offline and online because actually it's all connected, connected. Some people have got iPhones that now open their front doors because it's all internet or Wi-Fi connected. So we do really need to sort of think about what we're doing and how we're doing it. And and also, the, of course, the other thing is the fact that you don't have always complete control of these things because, with especially with things like Facebook, you know, when you get tagged in something, you know, I I personally don't usually put pictures of um, of our kids online. But there have been situations where other family members or friends have tagged me in something, um, but they've taken a picture of a party or something like that. And then all of a sudden, all sorts of images and all sorts of comments of things that you've been not posted by me or our immediate family um, specifically suddenly are online. And, and, and once they're online, they're very hard to get um, to get down, aren't they? That's like you were saying about the footprint is the fact that if you put a post up in your street, you can take it down and only the people that have seen it have seen it. But um, with with your footprint these days, it's it's there for a long time, if not permanently. And, um, and, and that has a big impact. And I think that's hard for children to understand is the fact that you might have posted something now which was really funny, but then when you're going for your first maybe part-time job or even full-time job in a, in, a, in, a, in a few short years' time, the first thing that some employers do is go onto Facebook or a social media site and um, search you and, and see what you're up to and what, and what your life entails. And, and all of those things then come back and are part of your record. Yeah, and that's huge. You know, more and more employers are doing that. And, you know... <laughs> we've really got to think about, you know, the classic example is about you tagging. You know, people are just too open, I think. And, I, you know, don't get me wrong, I do share on Facebook. So I had a scenario a couple of months ago. One son had broken his hand and the other son had broken his foot and it was quite comical in the space of four days of one another. Um, you know, and I posted a photo of both of them. Um, but I'm very, you know, 
I'm very conscious and I don't allow people to share my pictures or share my pictures of my children either because once it's out there, it is gone. You can never, ever, ever get it back. And I just think we need to be a little bit more protective. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't do it to your child on a street. You wouldn't walk around and introduce everybody to your child and go, hey, hi, this is so-and-so. You know, you're a lot more protective because you're like, oh, I don't want, you know, they, they, he, I don't know who he is. I don't want to talk to him. And we have this whole different mentality because it's physical. And, you know, the one thing that people have got to realize is what you cannot see is the danger, not what you can see. And, um, you know, and we've just you know almost got to get a grip a little bit with reality and say okay you know i can put pictures in it, but to tag or take pictures of other people's children you just can't do it's a categoric no you know you do not have that permission and also another thing that i'm coming across a lot and um as a parent you know uh children they have sleepovers and you know, parents are going, well, what do you do when, you know, they go over to pick somebody's house and, you know, they're watching whatever they want? And I went, okay, let me ask you this question. If your son went to somebody's house and they drank alcohol, how would you feel? And they go, I would go absolutely nuts. And I go, so what's the difference to them watching it YouTube when it's an 18, you know, or playing a game when it's an 18? I said, you have your rights as a parent to stop this and say, okay, these are the rules that we have in our house. And once we all start having that sort of mentality, we can be, we'll be able to protect our children a lot more. I think that's right. And I think also you mentioned the YouTube um, factor there. And it's amazing the perception I think that children have about if it's on YouTube, it's okay, no matter what the certificate may oh, or may not be. No. <laughs> Whereas they wouldn't put on a DVD that was a... 12 15 or 18 or whatever no, it would be no, but it's no. on youtube and it's just a clip and it's not the whole thing so therefore it's okay it's okay and i'm not quite sure where that comes from but i think whether it's a, just a generational thing it's kind of you know kind of youtube is my thing and this is uh this is this is part of my life and that's okay and actually whereas the dvd cupboard may just be part of the house and therefore i wouldn't go and do that <laughs> i'm not quite sure but there's definitely a definitely a, um a perception that it's a different type of world even if the content's the same yeah, no, totally. And it, that's a really big thing. You know, everybody's like, yeah, but my son plays YouTube and, and how do we stop it? And, and, it's, and it is down to that, well, would you let your search out? You know, YouTube is fantastic. My son learned to fish off YouTube, totally learned to fish and makes floats and, you know, they called all sorts of things to the point where he nicks my sparkly nail varnish. <laughs> but, you know, um, but we, we have to just change that it's all so online and people just think yeah just let their child go and have the internet free and do what they want you wouldn't let your child walk around the street on their own so why on earth are you letting them go on the internet on their own without any any sort of monitoring and I'm not one for a helicopter parent I am a very liberal parent and both my children you know are very independent and um, but I have boundaries and I use something at home and it is an amazing tool called Home Halo, and I have tested all of them, and it's by far the best, um, you know, device. And it allows me to give content for the 10-year-old and different content for the 15-year-old. But also what it does is it empowers me to switch off the internet on individual devices. Because another thing is, is we all, as parents, sometimes, and I hold my hands up to this as well, use iPads and iPhones as babysitters. How many of us have been in the doctors or, you know, and you go, oh, you know, they're driving you crazy and you have that long journeys, have that, you know, it's easy to do. But we have to create boundaries in exactly the same way as we would walking around or letting our children go out in the evening. You know, my 12, well, he's 15. I, you know, he has to be in. He has a party. He's got to be in by 11.30. You know, he's nearly 16. But he it's the same with the internet. The internet in our house goes off at 9 o'clock on a school night. There is no negotiation whatsoever. Those are the rules. Not because, you know, I'm a control freak, but actually he needs to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, and that's like, a, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry to get in there. I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a massive thing as well, isn't it? It's, you know, the, the whole whatever the content happens to be at that time of night, you know, there's just the general well-being of kind of if they've got an iPad in their room or if they've got internet in their room, the chances are they'll want to do it and they'll push and they'll do it late and they've gone to bed and it's all fine and the door's shut and all that sort of thing. And, and that's 
when it starts and that's when the grooming starts and you know you don't you don't even know it's going on that's when it starts and you and it amazes me how but how do you stop them and I go well you take it away you know it is literal you know be a parent be yeah. a parent you know and and stop you know, you do literally have to take control again. You do have to take take control, and and you know, I get I get as you can most probably sense in my voice, I get really passionate about it. Really, really, very passionate that you know we tend to let our children do what they want to do rather than going. Actually, yeah, it's a bit difficult at the beginning, but um, you know, in the long term, it works. You know, you do have to just restrict them. Absolutely, and. Um... Was it Halo you said was the one yeah, of the tools? Yeah, Halo, used? yeah. We give them, anybody wants one, just email me. I have a stash in my office um, because I think it is so amazing um, and so brilliant because of what I tested. We, the girls are laughing because we've just got 20 boxes that have just arrived <laughs> at the office as we speak. But I think it's so amazing that we're giving every school that has Gooseby Planet, every one of the parent gets one of these free of charge. Oh, that's and, fantastic. And, and gets a, yeah, a free subscription for 30 days because it is just brilliant because it just brings the control back into the house. And like you said, it's actually about wel- welfare. You know, I can confidently go, my son takes his phone up to his bedroom and the internet turns off. We're lucky we're in a bad area, so we don't have 4 or 3G. But if we did, I would literally take the phone off him. No, yeah. no devices. And the statistics are 71% of five to six-year-olds have now a device in their bedroom, which I think is scandalous. I just don't can't even believe parents allow that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, you said about contacting you. So just tell us about your website and um, and the best way for people to kind of sort of have a have a look at Gooseberry Planet and the things that are on offered. I mean, I've got a really good idea now of how it all works from from chatting, which has been fantastic. But if people want to go and actually um vis- um um visually look at what's going on, where where do they need to go and 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 what have you got on offer on the website? Right, go our website is gooseberryplanet dot com. Um, and but we are very much targeted schools. So what we're asking parents and to do is go into the schools and say, why are we not doing Gooseberry Planet? Because we are the only platform in the UK, potentially globally, that is offering what we're offering. Um, We also have a lot of free resource on our website for parents. If you go into the news area, there's one on Musical.ly, which is the most downloaded app at the moment for the biggest concern from Seop. There's Pokemon, there's sexting, um, you know, flirty sex. You know, there's lots of different different things there for parents. Um, Unfortunately, the system doesn't work unless the school buys it. So you do have to push back. Um, and, you know, go to the school going, right, what are we doing? How are we teaching this? And, you know, and, and take and push the school to do it. Great. And and, and, and what, what is the cost of the school? The school got, you know, it's not, it's £3.50 a year per student. So the parents could even say, do you know what, I'll pay it. Yeah. yeah. So it's £3.50 per student per year. And that means they the teacher gets an app for them, the child and the parent and all the resources are free of charge. Oh, that's well, that- good. Yeah. I mean, it's fantastic value, and that, and that, and then you're completely set up, as we said um, right right at the beginning of of chatting. You know, everybody's connected, and everyone knows what's going on. You feel like collectively, um, we're looking after our children um, online, and um, and and I think that just feels like a great place to be, rather than like we said about just having it as a separate thing. Oh, it's fine. There'll be a there'll be someone stood by a whiteboard at some stage talking again about e safety and um, and making sure that you don't chat online to anyone that you don't know. <laughs> and um, and and the, the things have moved on so so much further now. And um, it sounds like a a, fan, a fantastic thing to to get involved. And I know our school's not done it. And that's um, I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is um is is have that conversation too. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I think as well, if we join forces and um, if everybody starts taking responsibility, something always has to start somewhere, and that's one of my missions is let's make a change. Let's make schools teach this on a regular basis. Yes, maths is important. Yes, English is important, but life schools are just as important, you know, and I think it would be every parent's worst nightmare to have to go through what Lauren went through with Breck when he got murdered by somebody online, you know, I don't think any one of us can really comprehend what you know she's an amazing human being that could go through and I think if we all stand up for it it's our way to stand up for it and say right let's make a difference let's make you know make this happen absolutely and um and on on the website you've got some testimonials of um of other students in schools doing it um now which which looks really really good I mean how, how many schools have you have you been involved in 
Right. So we've only been, we only launched on October the seventh, twenty fifteen, and we've got one hundred and eleven, well, one hundred and twelve schools and twenty two thousand students and growing. Um, so we've got some really exciting stuff happening this year. So we hope to double that by the end of the year easily. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, and you've also got um, a CPD section. Can you explain a yeah. little bit about that? Well, it's a statutory guidelines, and this is the. No, one of my biggest bugbears, but um, it is a statutory requirement that every member of staff in a school has to be trained on safeguarding. Now, some schools feel it's okay um, just to have um, a piece of paper, the teacher signs it, and then that's their training done. So what we've done is created online training for teachers. Um, they can go on in their own time. There's little modules broken down and get their safeguarding training. So it really fits with what the school has to do. And it also gives the head teacher the, flex- the, the visualization of who's done it and who hasn't. So, you know, from a statute requirement, they have to, for Ofsted, all be taught about safeguarding. So our CPD has been launched in about five days. And it looks like the game. There's a bit of a game in there. It's fun. It's interactive. So we're just trying to bring to life something that, you know, is, a bit of a heavy topic really and I, I think that's really key I, I've, I've just had to do the same sort of thing as a as a musician and educator I, I go into schools and teach and um and one of the organizations that I work for has done exactly the same sort of thing rather than just literally um hundreds of people being in a room being talked at by somebody who has to tell you what it is that you need to say or not say or what the protocol is for anything yes, um, by powerpoint yeah exactly <laughs> exactly which isn't very powerful um <laughs> Um, it's then um, it, it was done online. It was done in modules. It was done with scenarios, and you've got the time to do it in in your own space. And you really have to do it on your own, and you really have to know what you're talking about, having been through all the information. And um, and it, you really do feel like you're in a in, in a better position than to just be completely aware of what it is. You know, you're um, you're supporting your school and then everything they've got to do, like I said, from Ofsted and all that kind of thing. But also at the same time, you've got all the skills that you need and you've actually been totally immersed. And also you're doing it in the same type of ways you can be doing the training for the children as well, which I think then, as we said before, it's all about linking it up and actually feeling like you're part of the same community. And we're, we're all learning whether we're, we're, we're the adults or the children, because you say is these things are moving so fast and new technology brings up new challenges. Yeah, and and I think technology look we we've got a education is still the same as it was in the victorian times you know yes we have touch boards yes um touch screens and and um technology to do it but actually how has that changed as in teaching and and, and teachers i feel for them because they are put under so much pressure um and And we need to give them more resource rather than moaning at them all the time. Let's help them achieve what they need. And technology is such a good way because you can track learning outcomes, how people are performing, because it's real evidence rather than, you know, going on a gut instinct whether somebody's learned it or not. And, and and that's key and that, like I say I mean evidence is key at the minute for in education and so to be able to do that in a in a in a in a more modern way is um is a really is a really positive thing I think um well thanks so much for, for joining me today it's been a really interesting and thought-provoking conversation and um and as Stella said if you go to gooseberryplanet.com um there's some great resources there you can get in contact there um and and also just with that knowledge you can go to your school and say that you've heard about this or it's something you'd like to implement as a as a teacher um and just send them straight to the website it's really clear it's really um it's got so many great resources on there and so many um free extras and um i really recommend you just yeah do it as a starting point and and just see if we can sort of connect all these things together and work to work together to to, for the safeguarding of of our children and also for ourselves yeah no absolutely i think it's something that each generation has to do you know we can't hide from that anymore absolutely thank you for having me on oh pleasure i'm 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 so glad you could join us and uh, and especially having having met you at the nape conference um it was uh really nice to be able to sort of have a proper full conversation about it and and really sort of inform our our listeners of of exactly what was involved and and how they can use gooseberry planet Oh, brilliant. No problem at all. Lovely. And, um, anytime. <laughs> Great. Thanks very much, Stella. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information, please go to educationonfire.com.